We begin on January 11th, 1992 in Peru, Vermont, where Alan Post was enjoying a weekend ski trip with his 21-year-old son, Casey, and some friends. Casey was an excellent skier, and the same thing transformed into this snowboarding. He always did everything sort of on the extreme, on the edge. I hate to say this, but it was an accident waiting to happen at some point in his life. Casey's college friend, Jenny Michaels, was skiing Bromley Mountain with them that day. Casey is a very exuberant personality, and he just has an innate talent for anything when it comes to like physical type of activities. People turn around on the lifts and watch him go by. He definitely has the finesse and the flair on his snowboard. I, we, I that last time. Oh, we did that last time? Let's go okay, let's go corkscrew, okay? He went shooting down, and then we started to follow him. Casey wanted to go on a different run, so we separated. We were all going to meet in for lunch. Carol Allen was on her way up the mountain on the ski lift. I noticed coming down the corkscrew trail, a snowboarder. He was skiing the outside right on the edge of the trail. He was trying to pass everybody. He was picking up incredible speed, and I thought, this guy's going to get hurt. Jim Mithofer and several other members of the Bromley Mountain Ski Patrol happened to be training nearby. We were running a ski clinic, just practicing brushing up on skills. I sort of caught a streak out of the corner of my eye and there were some other people above us who said, help, we need help, there's been a bad accident. Patrol 8 to Ski Patrol. We've got a person over the bank, just below two The skier, it almost looked like he was having sort of the final rigors of death. Patrol 8 to Ski Patrol. When we continue, they were trying to give off the impression that everything was fine, that they kept trying to keep calm, but it was so obvious that the energy in the air, that there was something serious that happened. When Casey Post snowboarded off the side of a trail into a ravine, members of the Bromley Mountain Ski Patrol, including senior patrol member Tom Cutbush, happened to be on a training exercise less than 50 yards away. As I approached the victim, there was a lot of blood behind the victim's head. I knew the victim had bounced his head off of a rock. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Lo and behold, there's a pause of just a few seconds, and I hear a faint yes. Okay, great. Listen, my name's Tom from the Ski Patrol. The main thing I was concerned about was the integrity of his cervical spine. Tom took over applied manual traction. Is that sore? Yeah. Just keep talking to him. That was our most important mission, to keep him in that position. Yeah. There was a lot of blood building up on my left mitten because of the injury to the back of the head. He also kept saying to me a number of times that he was scared. And I said, it's okay to be scared, but you don't have to be. Jim and I are here. Okay, down. One, two, three, down. Okay. okay real good, real good. Nice. After the straps are put on, it was absolutely mandatory that this be as tight as possible without cutting off circulation so the victim did not move at all. At the lodge at the bottom of the slopes, Casey's father and Jenny Michaels were waiting for him, unaware of what had happened. I wonder where Casey is. I just have the feeling that something 
was wrong because we were all meant to be down there having lunch and there was no Casey. When we walked into the first aid building, that was really when I felt like my heart was stopped because they were trying to give off the impression that everything was fine, that they kept trying to keep calm. But it was so obvious that the energy in the air that there was something terrible and serious that happened. Anybody heard from the ambulance yet? I knew there was something wrong with his head, obviously, because there was a lot of blood. It was excruciating to think that your son might be a quadriplegic. That was just, that went through my mind. 21-year-old Casey Post was transported 40 miles to Rutland Regional Medical Center and put under the care of neurosurgeon Peter Upton. No it was quite apparent that Casey had some very severe and potentially life-threatening injuries. How about your head? Um, it doesn't really he had a big cut on his scalp, what we call a depressed skull fracture. I mean, there was a piece of bone that was actually pushed in. Inside the skull, there's a piece of bone which is broken off there, and that's going to need to be pulled back out and, and so we can relieve the pressure there. And this CAT scan showed that he had a neck fracture. Here in the front. I didn't know how seriously injured he really was until the doctor came and kind of briefed us on what the operation was going to entail, but that the risk of some brain damage was very high. Casey underwent two hours of surgery to repair his skull and stabilize his broken neck. His mother, Tanya Clark, got a chance to see him early the next morning. He was very groggy, and when you first go into his room, you can't realize that he can't turn this way or this way. He's looking up like this, and he can't move at all, so you have to come around into his face. I know that it always seems to be the way. It was just the scariest thing I've ever been through. What would you like? His fractures were in the first and second vertebrae in the neck, where the brain and the spinal cord join. And although I had him in traction and we had him in a special bed, you still have to be careful. If he tries to get out of bed with this device on, he could end up paralyzing or dying from that. Okay. Okay. No. I, think, I think I'd rather live in some place like Portland, Maine. It's been two years since the accident. Casey Post has made a complete recovery. I had a couple doctors tell me, a couple doctors tell mom, and there's no reason that this kid should be alive right now. I think maybe they thought I was a crazy kid and that, you know, I wouldn't learn a lesson from this or I wouldn't, I wouldn't take in all this information. I was reckless, you know, I, I'll totally admit that. I was a lot more reckless and I wasn't as calculated and careful as I am now. I thank my whole family, my friends, and my doctor, Dr. Upton. And I'd really like to thank all of Bromley Ski Patrol. They're just amazing. For their efforts in saving Casey's life, Jim Mithofer and Tom Cutbush were honored by the National Ski Patrol. The skill levels that we do teach our patrollers is very, very high. Whether it's Bromley Mountain in Vermont or it's any mountain anywhere else, we're real proud of what we do. It's a really good feeling. Yeah. I think it touched a lot of people's lives. Everybody stopped, took two steps back. A bunch of my friends said, out of, out of anybody who we know, you'd be the one who'd break his neck, but you'd also be the one who'd survive. For my birthday, he wrote me this wonderful poem, and it went on and on and on about what I wanted to give you for your birthday. I couldn't put in a box, it isn't bagels, it isn't locks. Sort of like a, a Dr. Seuss rhyme, and then it got to one point and it said, so, mummy dear, to allay your fears so deep, I promise to look before I leap. Oh! <laughs> when will he ever learn? 